Kenny. That's funny. <laughs> No, it's fucking, I don't want to watch this fucking bundle. <laughs> <laughs> that's, fuck, that's a fucking... So, you're joining us on our road trip. Kenny and I are on our way down to fancy food. We thought we'd do a little, little, we think, maybe a little recording, maybe a lot of from recording. The village of Dansville. Yeah, from Dansville, actually. Um, so, it should be interesting. What um what should we talk about, man? American bugles. American so much bugles. Than They're crunchier. So Kenny dies of a heart attack on this trip. You know why? It's not the bugles. It's the McDonald's breakfast we just had. That might do it. And then the bugles. Not the bugles. Not the bugles. Could be the McDonald's. Uh, <laughs> it's been an interesting ride, though. We're in the back lanes. I don't know how we are. I have no idea where, where we are in relation. I, mean, I, should, I should look on the map. Like in relation to anything in this world, where are we? Um, we are. I mean, so we're like still state or we're somewhere? still Upper New York ish. Um, yeah, Upper New York State ish. Dansville, Cornell. Yeah. So Cornell is Cornell. out of Cornell. H. Cornell. Cornell with an H. Got it. I'm just curious. I, I just kind of look. This is kind of nice country. It's beautiful country. It's beautiful. Yeah. A lot of trees. Yeah. It's like it's really nice. It's very green. Yeah. It's just nice in here. Yeah. Wherever the hell we are. Wherever the heck we are. Yeah, I think we're we're heading down to fancy food. In case you don't know it, it's at the Javits Center. So we're driving from Toronto to New York. Mm -hmm. Nice five o'clock start. It's almost what, nine o'clock now. Mm -hmm. Wherever we are, mm -hmm. five hours ago, literally five hours ago. Was it five? Uh huh. Yeah, five hours one minute. Mm -hmm. Um, talking along, baby. Yeah, I think we're we're doing different things. I think we're. I mean, we're recording in the car, so hopefully this goes well. Um, but Chewing I think, right into the mic. <laughs> you know, in case you're wondering how tasty bugles are, um, bugle. So if this is you, contact us for um, your bill for for it's General Mills, man. <laughs> <laughs> Selling out to the big guy. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, fancy food show. Um, I guess I'm. I don't know what to expect from this show. I've not been before. You've it's been a, a million times. A million times. I don't know, five or six times. Mm -hmm. It's actually a great show. Might as well be a million times. Yeah, I mean, like, whatever. That's over mm -hmm. a span, a span of 25 years. Mm -hmm. That's great, though. You're going to see a lot of stuff. Um, definitely a lot of European. Okay. Um, probably a lot of South American. I don't know if there'll be a lot of Asian or not. Typically, that's the West Coast one. Okay. Um, but it should, yeah, I mean, it's, it should be good. There's a lot of cheese, it should be a lot of meats, and then a lot of the normal CPG, but I, I think you're going to enjoy it. I, is I it really a, like it. Is it a big show? Like, so are we talking, yeah, like, because Javits Center is really big, right? 2,300 vendors and about 3,000 tables. Fuck. Something like that. Yeah, it's not small. No, it's a good size. It's a big show. It's a big show. It might be, I don't know if, I don't know, I don't know where it ranks. I mean, it's not Sea Isle, which is in Europe, which is freaking massive. Yeah, which is massive. But this is a big show. It takes the whole job at center. Yeah. The main floor or the and then the upper floor. Wow. So it's not small. So it's not small at all. Okay. And in terms okay. of size of vendors, you should have a little bit of everything. You have a lot of probably a lot of distributors. Yeah. Uh, a lot of import export. Um I mean we're on the hunt probably for different things too. I was thinking we're gonna be looking for some cheeses. I wouldn't mind looking at some cookies and crackers, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and this just general trends. Just kind of curious to see where this market's going. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know if it's going to be a lot different than, than Canada or different than Vancouver. I don't know the economics down here relative to our part. I, we're all suffering the same inflation and all that stuff. But I'm kind of curious to see what that's, the mood is like. And That's a bit of a challenge, right? Like if you're... 
trying to bring stuff from overseas. Like if you're coming out of China, the container prices have come back oh, down. Way down. <clears throat> like what are they at now? From I would assume from China, they're between I would assume between three and five thousand US. So back to normal. Really. Yeah, I would think so. Okay. And then what about from Europe? Europe is still then? not cheap. I mean, it's better. I don't know what the last quote was. I think the last quote was. I'm, I'm, I'll probably get a bullshit number. I'm, gonna, I'm assuming it was between eight and nine, eight and nine US. Okay, so still you know, higher than average. Higher, but yeah, but better than its what way it down. was. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's probably near half yeah. what, half of what it was. Which makes a big difference, right? But then the euro's also, I think, gone the other way versus our dollar. Yeah. So, like yeah. for us at this show, if we're looking at bringing stuff in from the states, we got a U.S. dollar. Yeah. If we're looking from Europe, it's a euro. Yeah. You know, then we got to look at shipping, etc. So, I always tell you, come to a show like this, you got to look at the price and probably multiply by between one five and one point six five to get an idea of what it's probably costing you more or less to to land it back home. Maybe a little higher, maybe 1.7. So, so let's do that because that's interesting, right? So if it's right? a dollar. So if it's dollar. It's not a dollar. Right. It's at least a dollar 35. So so when you say a dollar, you mean the product, whatever it is. It'll both say it's a dollar, a dollar, whatever. If it's, a, if it's one euro dollar, then for us it's a dollar 50 something plus the shipping. So first conversion. Second right. is your shipping. Shipping. You got some import duties. What's so your rule of thumb on shipping? What do you what do you I add? Say ten, like ten percent. Okay. So that's why, like, I think on a if it was a euro, I'd say a one point seven multiplier. So if they quote you a euro, assume it's a dollar seventy by the time it lands. Yeah. Maybe a okay. little higher if it's a US. Be the dollar thirty five ish plus another say because you because you've got a you've got a one point five like euro conversion rate yeah, more or less right? so so then a euro dollar is really a buck fifty yeah, Canadian so let's call it yeah, right and another ten percent and then for another ten percent for shipping and who else so, you know, a mistake yeah. here or there or yeah. whatever yeah yeah, yeah I don't yeah, think yeah. that's unreasonable so you're a buck seventy now yeah before you start talking we about anything. that's just to get it to your just to get door. it into the country into your but, and that doesn't include things like customs or anything else, no? Yeah, no, it could be buried in there. Okay. And that's, that's hope. That's, you know, again, if everything's sort of compliant and ready to go, if yeah. they don't have Canadian packaging, like English, French, the right nutritional pattern, right. maybe it's a dollar, 10 euro, not a dollar anymore. Yeah. Because, you know, the problem with Canada is, you know, we're small. Yeah. So not everybody wants to run in and deal with seven cities. Yep. Yeah. You know, spread out over 5,000 miles. Yeah. We don't have a huge population base, and then we do make it sometimes a little challenging, you know, well, to deal with us. The English, French, for a lot of countries, is a pain in the ass. And then you, you have different challenges than someone say like me, right? Because you're on the west coast, so when you're dealing with these guys, you've got to specify where you want to deliver to, right? Because the delivery cost to like a Vancouver versus yeah. a Toronto, and would a lot be of different. times what these guys will quote is that will be mm -hmm. their place, right? Right, so you have to build all that in. So, like I said, a dollar seventy, dollar seventy-five, maybe from Europe is probably okay. It should, that should be fine. So, <coughs> excuse me. Can we play that all the way out? So, if it's a buck seventy-five, before you do anything with it, yeah. in your in your mind, what is the calculus to get it? Like, so at a buck seventy, what is it? Probably what should it retail? Retail, retail at six ninety-nine. Right. Right. So, so ideally, three probably times, start four higher. You'd times look the at the cost. product and say, before you yeah. did, before you worried about a dollar seventy, dollar seventy five landed, yeah. I would look at it, and you know, we'll be discussing. Okay, what do we think we can do in this? Oh, this is like a four ninety nine retail. You work backwards. Yeah, and there you're going to get down to like a buck and a quarter, a buck forty, which yeah. then you're you're dead before you start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was going to cost you a dollar seventy five just to land yeah. it. What are you going to do? Yeah, the game's over. So yeah. Okay. Okay. And with cheese is going to be interesting too because you need quota, right? Which we have to to to. to can look you explain at. that? Government regulates how much cheese can come into our country. Okay, and then you have rights to In a the old certain days, amount it of. Used to be, the if quota. I'm not mistaken, yeah, it used to be strictly a distributor or a man you a distributor, so like a Saputo yeah. would have quota, and then a bunch of other little guys would have had quota. Over the years, they typically sold it to people like Sabuto and whoever, 
And what that allows you to do is actually bring cheese. Like you can't just phone Euro or Italy and say, you know, I want a pallet of Parmigiano because they can't, you can't bring it into the country legally unless you have right. a quota from the government saying you're allowed X amount of kilos for you to import to sell. Like it, it's, you can't do it. Does the quota stay the same every year no. or is it like a, a moving, like how, how do you determine how the number? Much, how much cheese you're doing and I'm assuming there's other things within the government calculation. I don't know if it matters how much. Wait, wait. So if I do three million dollars in cheeses, it's called by kilo. It's so by if you kilo. did, I don't know. Let's say you did fifty thousand kilos of cheese. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. Let's say they give you fifteen thousand. Oh, that makes kilos. sense. It'd be weight and not. Yeah. Not and again, I don't know. I don't know what yeah. the calculation, but they yeah. might give you fifteen thousand kilos uh, allowable for importation. And because of where we are, like in Canada, you can use it, if I'm not mistaken, and someone can correct us, if anything that's imported, but most won't use it for like American cheese, we'll all use it for Dutch or Italian or French or like New Zealand. Like you'll do cheeses from other places where you can probably make a little extra money on it as opposed to dealing with yeah, strictly something experiential, yeah. something kind of cool. Or something that everybody, like, off everybody the beats wants a path pee, a little bit. Wants a yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Whether you want to bring that, you know, if you're, if you can bring it in and make a few more pennies than having a bunch of distributors in the middle. I mean, so you may or may not know this, but like, so does quota? Does the over? Is there like an overall number for Canada? I think like, the Canadian government determines what what's allowable. Like, but remember, it's, it's all set up. Yeah, it's all set up really more to protect. Or what the intention? <laughs> oh, technical problem there. <laughs> it's it, the intent is to protect yeah. Canadian industry. Okay, right. No different, I guess, what the milk board was set up to do was yeah. to make sure that Canadian dairy took prominence over okay. our neighbor where we are now in the states. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And for Canada, for cheese, I think a large part of it. Definitively, was to probably protect uh, Quebec cheese, right? Um, probably Ontario cheese at the time, okay? Right? Yeah. If, if really, truly, I like our cheeses in Canada. The cheese that comes out of Quebec and Ontario, even BC, we make some pretty scoopum cheeses. Yeah. I don't know how much protection we really need. Need per se. Wait, are you right? gonna get hunted down for saying this? Uh, probably. Because again, you know what it's like. If you can do, if you make a good product, it should stand on its own. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't protect things forever, so yeah. I don't think it's a bad idea to protect your own industries, but I don't think our Quebec cheese to a certain extent, right? Yeah. Like you, you need, you still need fair market competition. Exactly. You need some of those things. So. Exactly. Yeah, you yeah, pay yeah, for yeah. that though too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you don't, you know, our cheese is from Europe are much more expensive than maybe the states where they don't have a system yeah. like this because. You're only allowed to bring in X. Well, if your demand is X plus one, yeah. and your supply is X minus one, well, guess what? Yeah. yeah. You're going to pay more for your cheeses, right? Yeah. There's not rocket science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. but again, you're trying to also protect That's cool. our own industries, right? Yeah, it's interesting, right? Like, because I, I think all of this is... Yeah, it's cool, right? Know, I mean, it's, it's cool. It's, yeah. And we talk about it, but... Not well, everyone, most people don't know it you know. because it's not something you'd have to know. Well, you milk, go to your store, you buy cheese. Nobody really understands milk, right? Like milk is like this milk is insane. dark, murky. Right. Yeah. And then you have farmers, and you saw in the news, you know, last month, there's guys dumping 20, 30, 40,000 liters yeah. of milk because yeah, it was almost like, I think that was an over quota. They had yeah. too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. really? Yeah. We throw milk out? I know. It's crazy. What the hell's the matter with us? It's crazy. Like, put it into cheese or yeah, yeah. into it's crazy. Protein, anything. Or do something. Anything. Yeah. Anything better than throwing it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to stop for a second so we can fix our technical okay. issues.